Hello everyone and welcome back! In the next couple of lessons we are going to transform our custom file upload component into a fully compatible form control, meaning that our file upload component is going to be compatible with both reactive and template driven forms. Let's take a look at what we will be able to do with this component that we can't now because it's not compatible with Angular forms. If we take the example of where we are using this component here on step 2 of our multi-step form we can see that the file upload component is used here in order to upload a file of type PNG. Now this file upload component even though it's here in the middle of the form it's not integrated with the form using for example the form control name directive or ng model in case that this was a template driven form. This means that going back here to the screen where this form is running the file upload component does not participate in the validation of the surrounding form. So for example in the case of this file upload component we would like for the form to be valid only if a file with extension jpeg was successfully uploaded to our backend. We would also like to take the file name and add it to the overall form value in order to save it in our database for example. We might even want to create a custom form field validator for this field specifying that the file name needs to follow a given convention. So in general we would like to make this file upload component compatible with Angular forms, both template driven and reactive. And going back here to our workspace, this means in the concrete case here of our file upload component that we would like to apply here the form control name directive. And we would like to assign here the name of a form field, for example course thumbnail. The problem is that if we try to do this right now we are going to get an error saying that this file upload component is not compatible with Angular forms. So how do we take this component and integrate it with the Angular forms module? The first thing that we need to do is to implement an interface here in our class which is called the control value accessor interface. Before implementing this interface let's have a look at the documentation in order to better understand how it works. We can see that there are four methods that we need to implement in order to turn our custom component into a custom form control. The first and most important one is the write value method. This method, just like all the four methods of the control value interface, is not meant to be called by us manually inside our component. These four methods are meant to be called by the Angular Forms module only, so if you see code where these methods are being called manually, that is probably an error. So when are each of these four methods called by the Angular Forms module? In order to understand each of these methods, let's remember that our custom form control, our file upload component, is going to be part of form. So that form is going to want to set values for each of its properties, and the form will also want to be notified whenever some of those property changes. So the form is responsible for gathering the value of each individual property. If for example we would initialize our form with an initial value, then the form needs a way of setting the value of each of its individual properties. Each form property is going to have a control value accessor associated to it. The association is made by directives that are part of the Angular Forms module. Some are built in and some are custom like the case of our file upload component. So each property has a control value accessor, so whenever the form needs to set the value of a given property, it can do so by calling the write value method. Once the value of the form is set, then the user is going to start to interact interact with the form and the user will input new values. The form also wants to get notified when a new value is available and the form can get that notification by registering here a callback. So the form is going to contact each of the control value accessors of its child properties and it's going to call register on change on it at form initialization time. Then when the form property changes because the user has typed in a new value for example, this on change callback is going to get called and the form is going to get notified of the new value for that particular property. 
in a very similar way. The form also wants to know whenever a form control was touched by the user. Whenever a single control in a form gets touched by the user, then the whole touched state of the whole form is going to be set to true. The form is considered touched if at least one of its child controls was touched. So the form can get notified if a control was touched via this callback that it passes to each of its child control value accessors using the register on touched method. And finally, the form can also set an enabled or disabled state for each of its child properties. So each child property of the form has a control value accessor associated to it and the form can set the state of each control by calling here set disabled state. In the case of our custom file upload component, we are going to be implementing the control value accessor interface manually. However, in the case of other controls in our form, such as for example, normal inputs, drop downs, checkboxes, etc. Those components already have a built-in control value accessor implementation, which is part of the Angular Forms module. So we didn't have to write those control value accessors ourselves for normal fields such as plain input text fields, etc. But those control value accessors are there working under the hood as part of the Angular Forms module. Because those control value accessors are usually applied to plain DOM elements such as input text boxes or text areas etc, they take the form of custom directives and not custom components. But they all implement the control value accessor interface just like our custom file upload component. Let's now quickly summarize what we have learned in this lesson. If we want to take a custom component and have it integrate well with the Angular Forms library, we need to have it implement the control value accessor interface. This is what is going to allow us to apply the form control directive into that component or even use the ng model directive. That would work well too. The control value accessor is made of these four methods. These are meant to be called by the Angular Forms module only and we are not supposed to call these methods ourselves. In the next few lessons we are going to be implementing these methods one by one. Notice that in order for the component to be fully integrated with Angular Forms, we are also going to have to implement a second interface which is the validator interface. We are also going to be covering it in the next few lessons.